your thing. Okay, so in three, two. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the March 15, 2022 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at the discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting by efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when attending, when requesting discussion on agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the Teams chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Hen. Present. Ms. Rowe. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, where we begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Mana. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Street. Ms. Sample. Ms. Crew. Mr. Spohr. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Mr. Hartlove. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? Hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Thank you, Ms. Jamison. Item two, approval of minutes. The live video footage of our last meeting represents the minutes of the meeting. The meeting stand approved as recorded. Item number three, new business, FY 2022-23 work plan update. Mr. Fletcher, please, please proceed with investigations report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I am going to share my screen. With everyone here so they can see the report. OK, I believe everyone should see the Office of Investigate. I'm sorry, the Office of Internal Audit Investigative Unit. Uh, FY 22, February 2022 report. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much. So this report of the investigative unit is a, as of February 22nd. I'm sorry, February 28th, 2022, uh, which is eight months or approximately two thirds of the way through the fiscal year. Um, this. Sorry about that. This report will discuss investigation activities during the month of February, so we will include cases that were open as of the end of the last month, as well as any new cases that were received during this month, during the month of February. And so as we take a look at table one, uh, this shows us the cases that were received during the month of February. And as you can see, we received eight cases, um, two, are cases that we will keep and investigate in the Office of Internal Audit. Both are related to payroll fraud or overtime abuse. One was sent to BCPS management to investigate and provide some level of response back to us. And then five were outside of the purview of the hotline and can be closed with a memo to file. And so as we go on to table two, here uh, we, we take a look at uh, the 13 cases that were open as of the end of January, so as of January 31st, 2022, we had 13 cases open and we add those, the eight cases that came in during the month of February. And now we're looking at 21 cases that were open at some point during the month of, of February of 2022. Now, the top part uh, of this table shows that 10 of those 21 cases uh, will be kept within the Office of Internal Audit to investigate. And then two uh, were sent to BCPS management uh, to investigate and provide a response back. And then nine uh, were actually outside of the purview of the hotline um, and, and can be addressed with a memo to file. And so that makes up the, the 21 cases that were open uh, at some point during the month. And then the bottom part of this table shows that as of February 28th, 
four of the cases, four of the 10 uh, internal audit investigations have been closed and six remain open. Uh, the details of all 10 of these cases are actually below in table three that we'll jump to in a second. And then one of the two cases that were sent to BCPS management uh, to investigate and, and provide a response back uh, has been closed and then one remains open. And the details of these two cases are actually in table four. And then all nine of the cases that were outside of the purview of the hotline have been closed with a memo to file. So none actually remain open as of 228. Um, and the details of all nine of these are in table five. And so as we go through, as I mentioned before, here's table three. So here are the 10 cases, uh, 10 investigations that are being conducted by our office. Uh, we have sorted them. The, the four that were closed during the month of February are up top. You can see the breakdowns here. Uh, two were substantiated, two were unsubstantiated. And then these are the six current investigations that we have right now. And then table four, this is what has been sent to management for their review. Uh, as I said, there were two. One was closed during the month of February, and here's that result here. And then the second one uh, is something we're still uh, awaiting response for. And then our last table, table five, are the nine cases that came in that were outside of uh, the, the purview of the hotline. And so we did close these with a memo to file um, to, to address um, the case and, and allow us to close them and, and move on from there. And that, Mr. McMillian, is the presentation for the investigations uh, of the Office of Internal Audit. OK, thank you. Um, any discussion on the investigations report? Ms. Hen? Yes, thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Fletcher. I Hi, was Sam. wondering if, hey, um, I was wondering if we could return to the nine that were closed with a memo to file. Um, was any other action taken in terms of, and, and I think I know the answer to this, but in terms of referring those to any other areas um, of which there yes. might be relevance? Yes, absolutely. So when something comes in, even if it's it's outside of the purview of, of our review, so if it's if it's not fraud, waste, and abuse, which is something that we would typically investigate, um, and it's not something that that we would want to send to management and get a response back, what we do internally is we would close it with a memo to file. However, we would still send those case details uh, to some level of of management, um, and really it just depends on on what. Um, the the information is, uh, and oftentimes it is information that comes in through the hotline and not an allegation. Um, so it, you know, depending on what it is that that comes in, we have a, a triage process really with every case that comes through, and and we kind of go through and and determine um, who it would be appropriate to send this information to. Um, so if it's something where you know, me as a a uh, employee, I'm complaining about my immediate supervisor, we're not going to send it to that supervisor. We'll, we'll send it um, to, a, to an appropriate level further up um, for, for that person to then um, re review and, and take action with if they determine it's necessary. OK, and does that person receiving um, that report then have a responsibility to report back to you the action that they take if they determine it necessary? Sure. So, so no, not not for those that are memo to file. That's the difference between the memo to file and the management referrals that we that we talk about here um, on on table four. So these two here are the ones that we will send out, and we will actually request a response back. And depending on the information that that has been submitted um, with the with the case details, we will go through and determine what specifically we want to have answered. Um, so sometimes it is what action has been taken. Um, sometimes it is actually an, an additional step further to say not only what action has been taken to address this, but how do we, what steps have been taken to make sure this doesn't continue to happen. Um, and, and so we will receive those responses back uh, before we close the, the, um, the case, close it, our investigation. Uh, but those are different from than these here, the, the memo to file. The memo to file, typically these are, um, as we said, they're, they're not allegations of fraud, waste, or abuse. 
Um, sometimes it's 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 uh, really just a a vent, uh, if you will, to where uh, an, an employee or someone is able to um, um, speak their mind a little bit, and then we're able to get that to the appropriate individuals so that they're aware of it. But in terms of what we're looking for um, related to fraud, waste, or abuse, it wouldn't be applicable for us to to or necessary for us to really receive a response back for it. Okay, and and would you in, in general would mm -hmm. you state that the the individuals that are filing reports that end up as in the disposition of memo to file, would you state that in general they are seeking to make somebody aware? of the information they are sharing and is that um, communicated back to them that someone has that the appropriate parties have been made aware of it or what what has been communicated back to them to sure them? so so anyone um, that submits anything through the hotline uh, whether they they call in or they go to the website um, will receive a, a standard response back now keep in mind when you go uh, through the ethics point hotline you you are able to remain anonymous uh, if you if you choose to, or you can provide your your name and, and contact information. Now, for those and for all of them, for for any reporter um, that submits information, they receive a report key, um, and so they're able to come back and actually check in on the status of the, um, the their case. And what we do is as soon as we receive a case, we do post a standard uh, response. I apologize. I don't have that in front of me. I know we can send you a copy, but it's it's very um, simplistic language in terms of we thank them for submitting this information. We're going to review it, um, but because of, of um, you know, sometimes these things have personnel implications, they're not going to re receive a response back. Um, you know, we're not going to give them um, the information to say how this was handled, but what we do, we, we give them the acknowledgement that we have received it and we will make sure the, the appropriate individuals are, um, are either made aware of it or that, you know, that the, the information provided will be reviewed. Okay. And, and last question. Thank you. This has been sure. really helpful. Um, if the reporter, um, submits information and it's not fraud, waste or abuse, it, it just, doesn't belong to you at, at all. Do we ever provide them with an alternate um, avenue to share the information? If they if, just really miss sure. Them? Sure. If they provide uh, contact information, we can we can have that conversation. Um, typically, what we would do is just in, instead of uh, pushing someone away from us and, and pointing them in another direction, we will just take that information and, and be the direct conduit uh, to get that information to the appropriate place. Um, but if, like I said, if someone does leave their contact information, we contact anyone um, that that leaves their contact information. So we will we'll call them back, we'll shoot an email, uh, whatever they provide us. So we will touch base with them. And again, that's really just a, an additional step to acknowledge the fact that we have received uh, their submission, um, but no, I, I would not, um, you know, if someone contacted us related to a, uh, a residency case, even though that should be, it's clearly indicated on several times going through the, the website and the, and the submission um, process that they should contact um, the, the, um, the PPW area. Right. I wouldn't tell them, no, we're not going to handle it. You need to, you need to contact them. We would just pass that information through for them, including the, the contact information, okay. their contact information, so that if the individuals reviewing their information need to contact them, they would have that as well. Got it. You answered my last question, that, that they give permission to share their contact information with anyone we send. Right. Yeah. Uh, typically, we would, as, as I'm having that conversation with them, if I know I'm going to be forwarding that information along, I will tell them that I'm, I'm going to forward their contact information as well. Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thank million. Thank you. Mr. Fletcher, I have a question about the memo to file. If, yes, sir. As a former employee, if somebody called, you know, if, if somebody had, you know, a gripe about me or whatever, is that memo to file, does that go in my file or does that go in a general file in, in the internal office somewhere? Sure. So it, it nothing goes into your file from from our office. 
Uh, when we call it a memo to file, that file is actually our internal file. Um, and ultimately, what the, the benefit of us closing out cases that way would be if something came in three, four, five times, we now understand that, you know, there, yes, it may be outside of our purview, uh, but we understand that there is something a little bit bigger than um, just someone maybe venting about a, a uh, supervisor or something at that level. I use that as an example. Um, so if it does come in re repetitively, then we may send it to the, the same individual that we have been, but this time we would actually request a response. Um, and then that would that would drop it to this section here where uh, now we've referred the, these case details to management and we would like to some type of response. Um, let, let us know how you've looked into it. What you know, what it, is there a problem um, and and give us some additional level of closure. Yeah, and, and I was going to say if, if just to use the word pattern. If you saw several different ones come through and they're in the internal of the internal uh, audits file, then mm -hmm. you can see a pattern that's established that would need, you know, contacting somebody else. Yes, sir, we do. OK, thank you. We're going to move on. Risk assessment. Ms. Manna, please proceed with the risk assessment report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a verbal update for the risk assessment this month. Um, we're still working on our interviews with the office and department heads, and we plan to complete all of them by April 8th, which is our target date of completion for the interviews. We actually have about six to eight more interviews remaining. Um, most of those are scheduled, so we will get them done shortly. We're almost there. And in addition to that, we are still working with management to complete the risk rating scorecards for the identified key functions that we have sent to them and the risk ratings that they are providing back to us. So we are still working through that process. Um, as we receive them, the internal audit risk assessment team meets periodically, at least every two weeks, sometimes more frequently, to review the risk ratings that were completed by management and now we're going to also start applying our risk ratings for the overall um, completed areas as as we're receiving them for, for a whole division we're going to look at it and do our own risk rating to um, come into that whole um, process and once um, we are able to complete each of the areas we will start looking at this as a whole for the whole entire organization the universe and that will help us develop our uh, areas of focus where the high risks are identified. And as part of this process, we are also trying to get feedback from board members and the superintendent. So therefore, we recently developed a survey that uh, will be sent out to all board members. Right now, we've only sent it out to the audit committee members. Um, we plan to send out to the rest of the board of ed members and another one to the superintendent by the end of this week. And this is all in line with Redbook to get um, the information that we need to include risk ratings for uh, the, the whole organization. So we plan to do this type of work, this risk survey on an annual basis. And we also will reevaluate our risks in all of the areas in the offices and departments on an annual basis so that we can make sure that our audit plan is as up to date as possible with what projects we are spending our resources and focus on. So last week we sent that survey to the audit committee members um, and we wanted to get your guys input this week to see if you had a chance to review the survey, any questions about the survey, and if you feel any additional input is needed when we provide it to the rest of the Board of Ed members. Ms. Meta, thank you and I'll comment on that. I've pulled it up, I haven't filled it out but I've looked at it and I'll go back and study it again. Uh, and if I have anything to say, I'll add that to, to you know, send it to Miss Barr. Miss Hen, do you have any comments? Um, no, likewise, I gave it a cursory look. I have not completed mine yet either, um, but I will send my feedback to Miss Barr as well. So thank you. OK, any other discussion on the risk assessment report, Miss Hen? No, thank you. OK. Uh, Mr. Concludes. McMillian, this is Ms. Barr. I just wanted yeah. to um, let the committee members uh, know that the survey is going to be sent electronically. So 
that what I sent to you, um, that is not to be filled out in that manner. You'll get a link to fill it out okay. electronically. OK, yeah. Now I did receive a link, but that's it's going to be something different. Oh, OK. I, I didn't think I sent the link to you all. I apologize then. No, that's that, okay. that link I, I hit something down the bottom and it sent me to a different format. OK. Then that's probably correct then. OK, so you think I should go ahead and fill it out? That yes. OK, OK, good. OK, that concludes the investigations and the risk assessment. Item four under announcements. The next meeting of the audit committee will be on Tuesday, April 19th, 2022 at 430 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much for joining us and enjoy your afternoon and evening.